Here we are again. We're still in search of the most unique compact tractor attachments. I think we've got a contestant here, don't you guys think? That? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Chainsaw on a stick. That's not what it's called, is it? No, nah, it's called limb saw. A limb saw. <laughs> limb saw on a stick. We're here with Frank from Limb Saw, and he's going to show us a unique. Show you the features of how it works and a little bit about the attachment itself. OK. So, so what is this? Well, it's a hydraulically powered saw. Okay. What we'll start out with is first thing is it's on an eight foot boom, okay? okay? So when I put it on my tractor, I'm gonna raise it up. It's eight foot above whatever height that my loader goes. I'm eight foot above that is my cutting height, okay? okay? It's very easy to attach. For instance, like this receiver is what we put on. And if I put it like on my tractor, on a bucket, I put it on the back side of my bucket. Right. This saw folds up and it weighs 86 pounds. So at 86 pounds, I can carry it out, slide it in here, pin it, in under five minutes by myself, I'll have this out ready to go trim trees by myself. Okay. Very when good. I get Fantastic. to the field, then I put it in the position that you see here. Okay. Let's say I'm up here 14 feet in the air and I'm gonna put this on a limb I wanna cut. Now I'm thinking, well, I don't, know how much pressure to put on the saw because I can't feel it, it's out of my hands. Right. So the whole purpose here is we have this little indicator that's going to be my guide, my visual guide that tells me what we're doing. So what I'm going to do, I set it on the limb that I want to cut without the saw running. That's very critical. Okay. So when I have it out here on the limb we're talking about, we put a little down pressure with our loader that raises the arm. Right. Now we see this lod went from black to yellow. At that point, it's telling me that I have the weight of the saw and the limb that I want to cut. Right, right. At that point, all I'm doing with that loader is merely putting it on the limb that I want. Okay. I stop, engage my hydraulics now, okay. and let just the weight of the saw make the cut. Right, awesome, okay. It, it looks only like takes- completely adjustable too. Well, you, you know, there's two different holes, but really just the, the, we're just looking at that indicator is our key point. Then we have a safety cable if something ever went wrong. We have it CE certified for your pin. We only need seven gallon of hydraulic flow on this saw to okay. make it work. At seven gallon though, we're putting out 12 and a half horsepower out of it. So even in our smaller utility tractors can utilize this tool with a whole lot of power. 12 and a half horsepower on a chainsaw is a lot. Right, right, That's right. Huge. But I don't have seven gallon from that. How much do you have? Johnny, well, he's rated at, at five or five and a half, but if, as long as I'm not steering, I guess. But I won't. No, you're, you're getting three, only three, because you I'm don't. I'm only going to get three, Kenny so says. Yes, you're only going to get three. He's a hydraulic <laughs> expert. We don't pay attention to hydraulic experts. <laughs> no, really, we probably only get about three. Are we going to get enough to? Well, what happens whenever you're at a lower flow rate? Around five, you're still going to get that flow going to the tractor, right. and you still have torque. It just doesn't turn the chain quite as fast as it does okay. at seven. Seven's kind of our optimum that the hydraulic motor just run and run and run, right. and that's the optimum top horsepower that okay. we put out of it. And a lot of guys say, okay, now I got up there. He said, do you oil it? You know, how do you oil the bar and chain? Well, we came off the pressure side of our hydraulics. Yes. And I teed off that, we built a little automatic oiler. Okay. So only when I'm running, I'm letting a trickle of oil come out of that system. Okay. That's how I run so through it's a journal. It's self-oiling. It's self-oiling. Yeah, That's nice. incredible. Really yeah, slick. That's a good idea. Okay, so let me ask you a technical question. On the return side, back to the tractor. Mm -hmm. So if you run that back to the tractor remote and you slam off the joystick quickly, the chainsaw has a little momentum. Is there any cushion valve or relief valve built into Don't it? Need. We, we, you know, it's a direct drive. Okay. We've been building this off 13 years. Okay. Got 5,000 plus of these on the market. Okay. It is a direct drive, but we're not turning at the real high speeds like what okay. your gas saws do. Say they turn it at 15,000 RPM to okay. get the horsepower to do it. We're turning at 5,000 okay. RPM. We do put flow controls on it to protect if we did have a small tractor and then we bought a skid steer that had 23, yeah, yeah. you can still use this saw on okay. it because okay. it's protected in that aspect. Okay, so you don't have to, you don't feel you need to run the return directly back to the tank or anything like that? No, sir. Just right no, to sir. the remote, okay. The cool thing about it, okay. we get the two lines, is let's say that the guy gets up there and all of a sudden he got greedy and he tries to cut a limb that's too big yes. and it starts to pinch, yes. okay? Now I throw it in reverse. Right. Probably the first chainsaw that I'm aware of that I can actually spin in backwards. Right, okay. So when I'm going forward, it pulls into the wood. Now if I throw it in reverse, 
it has a tendency to kick because there's nothing there to, right, to bite right. into the wood. Right. Okay. So that kind of helps free you up. Okay, but this chain, I bet you this is a proprietary chain and you're you're probably gonna screw me when I need to buy a <laughs> chain. Only Tim would say that. <laughs> no, the bar is off of a steel bolt pattern. I've used Oregon, steel, okay. Carlton, Trilink, lots of bars will fit it. I use a professional grade solid steel. Same thing with the chain. The only thing I tell the customer is make sure when you do put a new chain, if you need, that you use a semi-chisel. Remember, we use just the weight of the saw to make the cut and start it. It's designed for the semi-chisel. When you put that on, it'll immediately start and make the cut. Okay. And when I leave, I only take one tool with me. I take a 9 16 If I needed to make an adjustment on my chain, I take and loosen these two nuts here, 9 16 Right. And on the back side here is my tensioner. That's a 9 16 bolt. So just one but one. I kept it kept, uh, very yeah, simple. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, nice. works good that way. So, so let me ask you about these hoses. This looks like half inch. They're half inch male pipe threads, but the hoses are actually 3 8 I got you. Can I get these in a different size? Do they come with couplers? Don't have any couplers. We never know what a guy's going to put it on right. or what length that he needs. So okay. we run it to the bottom out of the last window, and then they are responsible for the hoses wherever their third function hookup is. Okay. And I realize this is a, a, a display model, so, so these hoses are probably longer on yes, a, on a yes. manufacturer? Yeah. On, on the eight foot, it comes out to that bottom window. They're 104 inches long. Right. Gotcha. One other thing that, you know, when we have the saw, we have eight foot of boom up there, and we're going across a field, and it's kind of rough and bouncing around. We knew that the stress point on that is right where we hook into our receiver. Knowing that, we went from the last window here down, took a 3 16 tubing, slid up inside of that, and welded okay. that in. Right. So okay. therefore, we've kind of triple walled it where it needed to be the strength, but still only weighs 86 pounds. I was surprised when you said 86 pounds. Yeah, most people are. They think it's going to be very, very heavy. Yes. I still wanted it to be an attachment yeah. that I could handle and slide yeah, in it I myself. Yeah, I would have well over 100. Yep. It's impressive. What the camera can't see here is there's some really nice clamps on the back side. This is, it, it, it strikes me as a very well professionally made tool because everything's clamped. The hoses are in perfect con condition and they're not going anywhere. They're not allowed to flop. Yeah, we're not letting it flop around at all. And we run it all inside of the tubing for protection because we're kind of in a hostile environment. We're going to bang sure. it around into trees and branches and stuff. It's protected by doing that. A lot of the things we've done over the last 13 years on improvements and changes has come from my customers. You know, the more eyes and right. people that I have using that give you feedback, the better it gets. And a lot of our little things have come from that in the past. Just made it better. Put your comment below. Is this the most unique attachment we've seen? Oh, farm we had one thing we didn't cover, Tim. How much does it cost, Frank? Ah, well, the saw <laughs> it retails at at two thousand ninety-five dollars is a retail. Okay, price retail on. price. Okay. Yes, okay, and that includes everything, including have, the hoses. It, hoses to the bottom. To the, the bottom. receiver. One of, one of those receivers. Yeah. Yep. It'll be kind of a plug and play deal. You How put your hoses on. How many of those proprietary chains do you give uh, Tim here? <laughs> <laughs> Have to buy them through Tim's Amazon web store. <laughs> That's ttt.com. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is a good question. Where do we buy this? Where do we buy this unit? Well, you can go on to www.limsaw.com. Okay. That's with an S, limsaws.com. And you'll ship it right to my house. We ship it FedEx ground. We ship every day. Ship right to your house. Oh, it's standard Excellent. shipping. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. It's in a box. It's only 58 so, inches. Where's it made, Frank? Nine. Where are you from? Ah, it's made in Noble, Oklahoma. Okay, I was just didn't know where you were from. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yes, okay, sir. excellent. Another made in America product. I love Thank it. Thank you. Well, I got that right here. Okay, yeah. cast your vote below. Is this the most unique tractor attachment? And is it something you might use? Let us know. Thanks, Frank. You Thank bet. You. <laughs> well, folks, that wraps it up. This is our final episode of the most unique tractor attachments that we saw at the National Farm Machinery Show. If you missed any of the episodes, make sure to click the playlist in the end screen of this video. After you've watched all the episodes, cast your vote in the poll that you see in the upper right hand corner, as long as your device supports it. Of course, there's no real winner. This is just all in fun. Each individual's needs will vary. So what might be your favorite might not be interesting at all to the next person. I think Kenny's gonna buy one right now.
something I should use. Special thanks to our guests, Kenny of boltonhooks.com and Jason, Diesel Shadow at greentractortalk.com and Diesel Shadow Man on YouTube. We really appreciate the insight that both of you guys provided. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.